Hey everybody, this is a quick tutorial on how to make a chart using numbers. I've been transitioning from Excel to numbers and it's a big learning curve for me too, but I'm super excited about learning this new software. So here we go. First thing you need to do is to make a table, your data table. Now your table cannot have any headings on the columns. So to get rid of that, you will go into where it says headers and footer and change the header columns to zero that will leave you something like this. Now, I'm only going to have the independent variable and one dependent variable, as you probably do too. So I'm going to have only two columns. My first column will be the water temperature, and it will be measured in degrees Celsius. The second column, which is my dependent variable, will be the breathing rate of a goldfish breathing rate. Uh, now, the first thing you need to do to this data table is to sort of beautify it and make sure it looks nice and proper. One of, the, one of the ways to do that, or one of the things you have to do to do that, is to make everything centered. So I've already highlighted my entire table and I've centered it. The second thing you want to do is to make sure the number of decimals in your table is consistent. You know this by looking at how your equipment is measuring this information. For example, temperature is usually measured down to 1 degree, 0.1 degrees Celsius. So when you highlight your table, only the water temperature in this case, I can then go to cell. The data format for me is number. And instead of leaving decimals to auto, I'm going to say it has one decimal. Yeah? Okay, so that's done. Now, whenever I type any number in here, regardless of how many decimals it actually has, it will round to 0 0.0 or to uh, one decimal place. So I'm going to have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. So my treatments here go up in 5 degrees Celsius increments. The goldfish breathing rate, uh, I'll just say it's a round number, so an, uh, a whole number. So I'm going to say 6, 9, 14... 18, 21, and 25 breaths per minute. Very important about the table, as you noticed, is that there's no text, in fact, in the data section, right? All the units are in the, in the heading of the table. Now we need a proper title for the table. I can make this text a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be that large. I can make this a little bit more, a little bit roomier. And then I'm going to label my table one. For table one, the effect of water temperature on the breathing rate of goldfish. I would, I should probably have the scientific name of goldfish in that title as well. But this is a good enough title. It has the independent variable and it has the uh, dependent variable as well. I would also probably add some controlled variables in that title, but that's for another time. Now to make a chart, now that my table is ready, I select the chart button. I want a scatter plot for this particular set of data. And you always want your, your chart to be black and white because when you print, it, the colors may not come off really well. So now you add the chart data and you can click on water temperature. Always click on the X value first or your independent variable. Now, once you do this, you will see that it selects water temperature and it shows a Y in there. And you don't have to worry because when you select your next column, which will be then your actual Y values, the first column you selected will change to X. So now you can actually check to see that you're doing this right. Your water temperature, your independent variable should be in the X axis or the horizontal axis. And the goldfish breathing rate, which is your dependent variable, should be in the right or in the Y axis, which is the vertical axis. And now I'm finished and you should see the data already plotted on the graph. Now we can actually add, edit the chart as we need to get rid of the key or the legend because there's only one series that is plotted. You want a title in there as well. And your title will be the same actually as your data table title. So that's easy. So I can just do that. And the axis labels also need to be labeled. So under axis name, the value here for the x axis label is the same as the heading where the data came from. So I'm going to say water temperature, and that is measured in degrees Celsius. Then for the Y value, and here's where I switch that, I also want an axis name, 
and I can say goldfish breathing rate. I actually need a unit for that, which is maybe breaths per minute. So I'm going to fix that here as well. Breathing rate. Instead of breathing rate, say breathing rate. And then I'm going to say measured in breaths per minute. Excellent. Now this is all you need to do in terms of the aesthetics, the looks of your graphs and your data table. Now comes the statistical analysis or the analysis of your graph, which requires you to add a trend line. This particular graph or this particular set of data calls for a linear trend line. There are two items about this line that are important. First is the equation of the line, which gives you the gradient or the slope and the R squared value, which shows you how strong the correlation between those two variables are. Now the equation of the line gives you a really important piece of information. The first one is the 0 0.7714 here, tells you that for every one unit in the x-axis, or for every increase in one degree Celsius of water temperature, the y value, or the goldfish breeding rate, increases by 0.7714. Okay. The R squared value is a number that ranges from 0 to 1. The closest the number is to 1, the better correlation there is, meaning the more water temperature impacts or affects the goldfish breeding rate. A number closer to 0 would means that you would ha probably have something close to a horizontal line, means that you would have the two variables have no correlation, meaning that the water temperature would not affect the goldfish breeding rate. And this is it. This is what your chart should look like. You have a trend line, you have the gradient of that line, you have the R squared value which shows you uh, the strength of the correlation, and you have a data table that is appropriately formatted. I hope this is easy to follow, and I'll see you guys in class.